What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Whether you're winding down your week or starting your weekend off, we're going to get it popping today before I bring my guest on the message of the week. This is from my guest today. He's very active on all social media, but particularly Twitter, which is where him and I met. This dude pumps out tons of awesome quotes and just motivational thoughts on a daily basis, like multiple bing, 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 bing. The dude's cranking them out. And this is one he put up uh, not too long ago. And uh, it, it makes me think of him, but also the current situation, kind of where everybody's at, what the mindset is. It's short and it's sweet. And we'll dissect it here in a few minutes. Lions don't bother themselves with the opinions of sheep. Just a friendly reminder. With that, I would like to zoom all the way to Columbia, Missouri, and introduce my guest, Ryan Clearwater. Ryan, are you here? What's going on? How are you doing this morning? What's going on, bro? You got the legit setup. Neon oh, try, green man. headphones, too? Damn, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're look my bad, wives. man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the host. One from no, my I'm wife. kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll send, I'll send them to you. Dope, dope. Yeah, come closer to that mic. That sounded really clear. Um, okay, great. That the, that's the road you were talking about? Uh, no, this is the Blue Yeti X. Uh, yeah, Blue Yeti. And you got yep. that, you're running it, you're running into your cell phone with that? Straight into my cell phone. I've got an adapter. It was kind of this uh, hit or miss thing where the guy said it might work, it might not. And I said, it's cool. The host of this show is uh, uh, understanding. Com so confident. he'll <laughs> we'll pivot. I think they call it a pivot. We will, we will pivot, yes. <laughs> That's really dope. You'll have to send me the specs on that uh, afterwards because I'm always playing. I've used lav mics, same thing. I'm running into my cell. And uh, even before all this went down, I had to test it a little bit because the station was closed down a couple times. So I wanted to continue the show, even though the producer was out of the country. And I was like, man, I got to do my show anyways. So I figured out like this remote setup and there's all kinds of gadgets and gadgets and stuff going into oh, it. Course. But yeah, I'd now, love what to kind learn. Of what kind of lava mic do you have? Uh, it's a, it's a booyah, <laughs> booyah, booyah, <laughs> B-O-Y-A. But I've also got some road stuff that I like as well. They both, uh, they both uh, are highly recommended and, and pretty versatile. And I, I like awesome. it because I've, I've often hosted in kind of chaotic environments, like my restaurant and there's stuff going on in the background. Oh, sure. You can, you can hear it a little more subtly, but when you have the lab mic, it just like barely picks it up. And uh, but everybody's still kind of clear in it. And I, I enjoy that aspect of it. But yeah, that, you got a really great sound coming out of that, man. That's dope. Thank you. How, how you doing today? I'm doing great, man. It's been a good day. You know, uh, uh, taking some time out of my day to do this is awesome. Um, right. With with my work outside of, um, you know, the Twitter feed and all of that, um, which isn't really considered work. Right. Um, <laughs> Depends on how you do it. It's how, it all depends on how you do it. Yeah. So um, I work in politics outside of um, outside of the motivational kind of uh, uh, life um, evaluation stuff. And uh, so we have a very busy week coming up next week. So this is a, a welcome reprieve from nice. uh, gearing up for that. So thanks awesome. for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. No, my pleasure. So you're in Columbia, Missouri. Did I get that correct? That's right. Home of the Tigers. We're uh, smack dab in the middle of the state, uh, about hour and a half, two hours from St. Louis on the east side, and then uh, about two hours uh, uh, west of us is Kansas City, uh, home of the Super Bowl, Kansas City Chiefs. I, would, I was uh, gonna, I knew you were going to plug for the Chiefs. I just could smell have it. to, have to. <laughs> it's been decades, man, and you know, and so uh, had to do it. <laughs> had to do it. <laughs> Uh, so give everybody just for context, a little background, you, uh, your parents, uh, were, they were entrepreneurs themselves. They had their own business. You grew up in that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, um, growing up, my family has always been involved in the community. Um, when I, I, as far back as I can remember, um, when I was young, I'm, I'm talking three, four years old. Um, we broke ground on a daycare center. I say we, I mean, I was, you know, in diapers probably. <laughs> you, were, but you were digging, I was, yeah. you had the, the shovel. <laughs> yeah, they had me working, you know, family work. And uh, 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 they broke ground, laid the concrete and uh, built a successful daycare center um, with the promise that they were going to own and operate it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that ten, in that 10 year period, um, I am blessed in the fact that I had a loving family that uh, made sure that every one of my needs was met. I have a uh, 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 development, developmentally disabled sister. So they also uh, made sure that her needs were met. 
um, whether that was me going to a soccer practice or her going to her therapeutic horseback riding. Um, we were always blessed in that regard. Now, with that being said, though, when you run a daycare center, there are other children involved, of course, yeah. and uh, those children's needs also need to be met. So um, for me, it was I, I I'm early on in my life. I mean, I was able to decipher when it was time for me and when it was time for other kids. And so that value of being able to say, you know what, life doesn't revolve around me and I should take a little bit of care and compassion and throw that towards other kids um, uh, was instilled very early on. Yeah, that's a great yeah. lesson, especially for, for right now. Sure, definitely. And that's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that you had me on here. I'm definitely blessed that you had me on here because um, I, I think we can all agree that in today's, uh, in today's climate, political and social, economic, you know, uh, uh, people don't have, uh, they're very quick to judge. Uh, people don't tend to have a lot of um, outwardly compassion for people, uh, especially on social media and places like Twitter, where you get a very small amount of characters to um, to communicate especially with Twitter, <laughs> especially on Twitter, um, and and even on long form platforms like Facebook, yeah. uh, you lose a lot of that nuance and a lot of that communication. So uh, it's very it's very easy for people to kind of get set in their ways and to lose any yeah. kind of ability to to talk. Well, and I say this in business too. Um, you know, that uh, if, if you're in digital services and your customer is not directly in front of you, you know, uh, right. it's easy to say certain things that you might not say if they were right in front of you. And I'm fortunate to have been in customer service, tangible, you know, real life customer service for over 25 years, practice that you know, this person's directly in front of me. There's a lot more accountability there than if you're behind a screen, whether it's business, whether it's your views on politics or uh, social policy. One of one of the things, because my I have children too, and they've grown up, you know, with the small business owner and, and helping with sure. small businesses. Um, and one policy I started to institute recently amongst the family, because we've got three kids, and you know it can get hectic and crazy and they've all been in the restaurant and seen how that operates and how to be successful there and it's not by treating each other you know like poorly so i just told them all to imagine That's right. when you're talking to each other you're speaking to a customer in the restaurant how would you act like of course you want maybe you disagree or maybe there's some negotiation on certain things but you want to do it with a certain amount of tact that everybody's happy at the end and everybody kind of gets what they want. That's and right. So I was like, we're going to, we're going to start this rule. Like if you wouldn't speak to a customer that way, and these are children <laughs> you That's know, that right. I'm doing this too. It's, you, it's but, an experiment, you know, <laughs> but you have to, I mean, we have to, we have yeah. to take a little more uh, stock in the fact that what our children learn early on is going to compound for years into their future. Yeah, so exactly. you have to instill those kinds of values into, into our, into our children, especially when, you know, a lot, I see parents all the time and I'll be completely honest with you. I'm one of them. Uh, try not to be, but you know, there's times I've got an 18 month old son and, uh, with the quarantine going on, I had to do a lot of daddy daycare here at the house. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was a, uh, instead of engaging, it was just easier to throw the phone at him or, you know, throw sure. uh, blues clues or paw patrol on the TV. Right. So, um, being able to instill those kinds of values and be a role model, for your kids and also to be a, uh, a conduit for knowledge for them, right? Somebody that they can trust to go to for advice and wisdom. And that's, you know, and it's, I'll just kind of spitball here for a freestyle here for a minute, but that's not just for kids, right? I mean, you're talking yeah. about coworkers, you're talking about people beneath you in the chain. And like, I was going to say the chain of command, but uh, people beneath you in your business, um, uh, people alongside you. And then of course, people, people above you, you know, it's, it's instilling that kind of culture that really, can set a, a business like a restaurant off or, or really, mm -hmm. frankly, any, any business, anything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, especially on your website, uh, sure. you, you talk a bit about that, um, and, and fidelity strategies. What's that all about? 
So Fidelity Strategies is a relationship-based company. What we do is we uh, help individuals communicate with other people better, uh, whether that's personally or professionally. Um, we also evaluate people and businesses to see what their, um, uh, what their strengths and weaknesses are and, and, and identify solutions for them to be able to, um, what would you say? Strengthen their weaknesses. So, so it's a lot of commun it's a lot of communication. It's been challenging. So right. I, I just started this company this year. Um, oh, great. We used, we used to do uh, uh, some social media, uh, uh, political social media stuff, but um, I've kind of shied away from that a little bit just because um, it's very easy to get caught in the echo chamber of politics. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, while we do political consulting, we do a lot more uh, personal and professional uh, consulting and development. Awesome. Um, what I was going to say is with the COVID situation, of course, uh, a lot of those one-on-one -on -one meetings aren't happening. So we have to resort to things like, you know, we could, I could have sat there and said, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pump the brakes on this. The time isn't right. Uh, and you know, uh, that's not, that doesn't do any kind of service. Yeah. Uh, and that's no due diligence to the people that need help the most and are out seeking it. So being able to have platforms like social media, zoom, FaceTime, uh, it actually makes communicating a heck of a lot easier because the travel components no longer there. Um, and immediate feedback I think is great. So in that way, nobody is waiting for an email or a text or a return phone call to clarify some very finer, some of the more finer points of personal development work. So, uh, that's what fidelity strategies is. And, uh, uh, in my, my terms, uh, or what I would think is a, a nutshell. And, and when did you guys kick off How you said this year? So this, so not 2020, but within mm -hmm. like the 365 the calendar gotcha. day calendar. So, year. Yeah. so, so you're, you're young still in terms of that iteration. I'm, I'm curious, something you said earlier about your parents, mm -hmm. they committed to a 10 year business plan. Do you know why they, uh, why they chose that time frame? just out of curiosity? Cause I've heard that before. Yeah, for them, I think it was more, um, and they're fascinating people if you ever wanted, I don't know if they'd be able to know how to set up a microphone, but uh, uh, they'd be fascinating people to talk to as well yeah. because uh, coming from an adult perspective of running a business. Um, but from what, I, from what I've gathered, the reason why was so that they had a, a clear plan for the future and the short term. So they knew that if they could build something within that 10 year period, uh, build it to the best of their ability, then they would be able to take the experiences from that and transfer them over into uh, their family life and other professional uh, ventures that they're wanting to get across. So, gotcha. I mean, it, uh, it was, uh, man, it was like 10 years. I mean, not to the dot, but, you know, or to the yeah. T, but it was 10 years of, uh, of dedicated service to our community, community that, uh, and then they, they, they got out. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the, the business that's running r the daycare still stands under a different name. Gotcha. Um, I drive by it almost every single day. And, uh, uh, from what I understand it's flourishing and, and, uh, to know that my, my parents had a direct impact on, uh, the future lives of kids. I mean, I don't know if that, I don't know if that business would still be around to serve the community if, if my folks hadn't built it. So, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's surreal. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Great. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just awesome. a minute. Okay. Awesome. Right. Everybody you listen to the entrepreneurial web. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Once again, Friday, high noon, you're listening to the entrepreneurial web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox here with my guest from Columbia, Missouri, Ryan Clearwater. Como. Co what does that mean? Columbia, Missouri, man. Como. Como. Come on now. Right. Hey, hey. I've, I've been on the I'm East Coast almost all my life. I don't know anything. I, don't, I didn't even know there was a country out there. I was like, what? It's not just New York. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. It's uh, there's a, they call oh, it flyover oh. states. I call it home. All right. All right. So we were just talking on the last segment about your family's business with, that you were a part of as a kid and their, their 10 year business plan. I've heard the reason I asked about that is because I've a lot of, it's interesting that somebody back then was doing that because that's more of a common thing now where I feel like 
earlier on, uh, families would build businesses that they were they intended to run a, and, and possibly even pass down. It's a generational thing. Yeah, yeah. So now, I, what I hear from a lot of people, they say, you know, go for it. Go for ten years. Five is too short. If you, if basically, if you survive ten years, especially as a brick and mortar business these days in this climate, that's like huge success because right. of the rapidity of like just flux. And now, I mean, now we've got a whole new component, you know. Oh yeah, to, with to with consider. innovative destruction, with innovative destruction occurring, and uh, the advent of the internet, businesses, uh, it's yeah. kind of that, that that whole adapt or die kind of idea, yeah. right? So uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, you used to hear all the time that uh, uh, vast majority of businesses would uh, uh, have to shut down after what a year, and then if mm -hmm. it's five years, yeah, that went down five ten percent. The I don't even remember the statistics, but um, uh, that still that number was astronomically high. So with how fast paced everything is now, I mean that five year period I think is kind of now the to 10 year period. So I think yeah. you're right. I think that businesses should, I mean, for to each their own. Right. But I mean, I, I think it is kind of this deal where it's for me, if I were to invest that time and opportunity into a business, I would love to, to stick with it personally. Um, I know others would love to move on and try to experience new things and uh, serve people better in other aspects. But for me, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could leave something like that. So yeah. I mean, it's almost like the startup mentality, but like just on a really slow pace, right? Like right. Startups right. will like build it quickly. They want to sell it. It's like, yeah, we did the same thing. Just we took 10 years. 10 years. To do it, <laughs> you know, but at least they did sell it, you know, and, and that it's still there. That's a testament That's to, I mean, I kind of am fascinated by that. And I'm on the fence about businesses that I've started and, and, and been involved with. Well, is sure. it is the goal to build it up and part ways with it but that so it continues still it's still it's you know a service to the community and it and it goes on to succeed but somebody else gets to dabble in it and then like i'm i'm kind of all over the place that way i kind of can understand that where i could i could just hop into something else as well jeremiah i think i don't think that there is one right or wrong answer there yeah and i think that that's something that i've realized as i've uh dabbled into my my business consulting is mm -hmm. what are the what are, what is it that you want what are your driving factors? Do you want to, do, do you not have the time anymore to, and I hate saying, do you not have the time? Uh, is it not a priority for you anymore? Is it something that you're right. wanting to move, move on from? And if so, and if you can, if you, if you hold something else to have more value, move on, but let's make sure that you're, you're doing it for the reasons that you're going to be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. So I, like I said, teach their own on that, you know? So I understand that if you're having a struggle or if anybody else is having a struggle on making those kinds of decisions, it's a, it's a tough one. It is. And what I've found is that, you know, for me personally, businesses operate better when I'm, when I'm hands-on with them sure. more often. And, and it's not a matter of necessarily you don't have enough time, but like you're, you're, you're only so much, you're only so much lion right? There's so much, That's only right. so much lion to go around and That's it's right. hard to be, I mean, there was a point where I was running five places at the same time and they were all wow. geographically very close to each other. Like four of them were on this, it were within two blocks. Um, and one was just a little outside of that, but still, I mean, you just can't be everywhere at once, even though you're that geographically, geographically co close, it's hard to keep your hands on the machinery of all of those things. And, uh, and yeah, we had to, we had to adjust things to where we could make it more manageable. Um, I think that representation is really important when, when ownership or leadership is there, if you find the right managers and, and you're making enough money to pay them, that's kind of that's great. Right. That's, that's rare though. I think it's becoming more and more rare these days where you find people that can represent your values and, and continue with your culture the way that you would, or at least close to it in a way that, that makes that business really sustainable and right. not just anonymous because i think what we're seeing right now i don't know what it's like where you're at but in new york all those places that were just kind of anonymous they're just disappearing because they didn't have the culture they didn't have the following you know there wasn't that connection to the community and like it sounds like to me what your parents did was that they really focused on that community connection and that's something that uh that we definitely tried to harness it's really hard to do if you're it's not very there. tough it's very yeah. tough and uh so uh, um so something that 
you said jumped out at me, the fact that you have to be, uh, or sometimes you might feel like you have to be everywhere at once. You know, if you're running five different, running five different businesses, or you have five different managers, um, you can't be everywhere at once. Something that I learned in the military was that uh, there's this aspect called decentralized command. Mm -hmm. So there's, so on the flip side of that is centralized command, which is where you are it and nobody can make a decision until they pass it through you. And I don't know a single successful business that is able to, to do that. They yeah. have to be able to be decentralized so that you can make decisions when they, when they have to come to you. But as long as the businesses are being taken, taken care of, the patrons are being taken care of, the employees are being taken care of, and, and everybody within your company has the ability to maneuver and the flexibility to make decisions uh, that advance your culture and your mission statement, that's, that's obvious, in my opinion, that's obviously going to be preferred over yeah. that, over that other, other thing, because then on the centralized side, you're not able to make, you're not able to get to everybody. And then you're doing a disservice to you, your employees, and then your, and then more importantly, your patrons. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how anybody would be able to do that. I like how that worked out. I wanted to rope in your military experience. I didn't sure. know how we were going to get there. That was just yeah, like right. so seamless and really nice. So <laughs> tell everybody a little bit about your, your military sure. background. So um, I will start by saying I was an ROTC cadet at the University of Missouri. Um, I graduated from Rockbridge High School uh, way back in 2004. To some people, that might make me a baby. To some people, mm. it might, might make me an old man. Um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, in, in high school, that was when, uh, of course, uh, nine 11 happened. Um, I'd always had this affinity for playing army guy. You know, I always had the yeah. GI Joes and the green soldiers. Uh, and so ended up being able to go to the air force ROTC program. Uh, after one year there, I decided that, uh, rather than fly the planes, I would love to have the opportunity to jump out of the planes. <laughs> So I transferred over to the Army, uh, Army ROTC program, uh, commissioned, and then um, ended up, I didn't have a glorious career. I unfortunately never got deployed. Um, as I got to see all my, all my, I would say brothers and sisters, but really my friends and mm -hmm. people that, that became very close to me, uh, got to see them deploy. Um, and, you know, so I, for me, that was rather difficult, but um, but I was able to, I went to field artillery school. I went to airborne school. Um, I ended up becoming a uh, uh, company executive officer, uh, which I'll explain that in a second. Yeah. Um, and a, uh, a, a CEO, a company commander uh, for an infantry drill sergeant unit based out of Quincy, Illinois, which is about, uh, man, I can't even remember, three, four hours away from Columbia. Um, great unit of, of, uh, gentlemen and ladies who, who dedicated their, their lives and their careers to making sure that, um, America was safe. Um, so that was, that was fantastic. Um, the company executive officer essentially takes care of the day-to-day -day activities of their, of their company. So they make sure that everybody has their training in line, uh, that they're scheduled for their training and, uh, that they're being taken care of. Um, whereas the company commander, of course, has a more uh, bird's eye view um, opinion and steers the unit in mm -hmm. the direction that, that meets the mission of, of the higher commands. So, gotcha. um, yeah, so that's, that's essentially it. Um, uh, loved every minute of it. Um, and, uh, you know, God bless our military, man. I, I know that our military and our law enforcement right now, a lot of folks are... Uh, uh, crying foul over a lot of things. And I don't want to get into the politics, but, uh, you know, God bless them for doing the, doing the job that they do. So. You must be familiar with Simon Sinek and some of his studies in military and business. I, you... I know a little bit about Simon Sinek. I okay. own a couple of his books, um, for me, and I cannot, and this is, uh, this is a mortal sin of mine. Um, I don't remember the author, but the book on killing uh, really oh, yeah. goes, in, goes into no, the psychological I, aspects of. I know that one well. Actually, his, uh, it's in the other room. I, I can't remember his name either. Uh, on Combat is fantastic. Yes. Have you read that? That yes, was like eye opening for me, man. Uh, 
there, there were just so many fascinating aspects uh, of that Great book. Books. I haven't read on killing yet, but I'd like to. Um, yeah, and I, he, he definitely kind of predated Simon Sinek in terms of that, because those books are a solid like 15 years old. And that was probably when Simon Sinek was just getting his, his feet wet in this. But, you yeah. know, essentially he, he is coming from a business background and followed mm -hmm. military companies around. And, uh, you know, I, one of his uh, more recent books is uh, Leaders Eat Last. Right. He was talking about, you know, how, how what the culture is like in uh, in a company and how the the younger, you know, I don't know That's what right. I don't know the names of all the, the yeah, different levels, but I would just say your junior soldiers, yeah, right? Your eight, your, your eight, your 18 year olds. Yeah. And, and quite, quite frank and not to interrupt, but I know exactly no, no, where you're, okay. I know where you're going here. Um, that's, that's a crucial aspect is making sure that your teams are taken care of before exactly. you are. And exactly. uh, to an extent, of course, um, and I have a little story for you, uh, to an extent, you have to make sure, of course, that you're taken care of, because if you're the decision maker, um, if you're not taking care of yourself, then again, you're doing a disservice to those around you. Um, I was blessed to be able to go to Fort Bragg, North Carolina for a very short month. Um, mm -hmm. I was slated to go, uh, uh, basically job shadow, a, uh, a special forces unit, um, ended up getting transferred into a psyops unit, uh, psychological operations and the cycle operate the psychological operations unit. Their job was to, uh, do all the print work for, uh, comic books and, you know, different types of pamphlets and flyers, uh, uh, that they would, you know, insert into, uh, areas where they wanted some information to get out. So while I was there and these printers, man, they're the size of a small house. <laughs> um, uh, th there was a general who had, pa there was a general who had passed away and, uh, I got gotcha. you. There was a general that passed away and, uh, uh, we had to do a mission, uh, in support of him. And I can get into that, uh, later. Cool. Great. Yeah. Let's pick up with that. When we come back, we'll take another quick break and we'll be back in just a few, everybody hang tight. All right, everybody. We're back again with my guest, Ryan Clearwater out of Como. Was that what it was called? That's it. You got it. Como. Got it. Como. <laughs> oh, yeah. Columbia, Missouri. So let's pick back up with that story. Great job catching that cue, too. You're you're sharp, man. You're ready for I the try. big time. I try. I try. Do, very good. Very good. <laughs> Go ahead. So, Proceed. Uh, so, yeah. So while I was at that unit, uh, uh, this general had passed away. Um, the, there were members of the joint chiefs of staff that were going to be going to that unit or to, uh, to that funeral, uh, the president was invited. Uh, uh, there were all sorts of commanding generals from all military branches going to this thing. It was a big deal. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, my happy ass ended up being, that, <laughs> being there during this like really important thing, college kid, you know, and I was just wide eyed, you know, innocent as the day as I was born. And, uh, and so what we ended up having to do was print, of course, the obituary, his story. And it was a multi-page pamphlet. Mm -hmm. I can't get my printer in my home office to work half the time. So I had to rely <laughs> on my soldiers who do this for a living, for a career, um, uh, to get that job done. So for me, it was a, uh, not so much an ego check because for me, I, when I find somebody that has the expertise and the knowledge to get something done, a hundred percent every single time I'm going to defer to that individual. Now, am yeah. I going to ask questions? You bet. I'm going to ask questions, but, um, and am I going to learn as much as I can? Am I going to be a sponge? Yeah, of course. But, uh, so when that, when that happened, when that general had passed away, all of a sudden we had, uh, colonels, uh, like on the, on the low end, we had colonels that are, uh, a colonel comes right before the first stage of being a general, um, we had generals. And then I think we did have a few, maybe like upper, uh, ranks, like, uh, majors, uh, that weren't in that Colonel to general range, but all of a sudden everybody was in my, in, I say my right, our unit, um, uh, observing everything and asking questions and making sure that everything was running smoothly for this funeral. It, that mission took 96 hours of that 96 hour operation. Uh, we had pages that, and I know that this seems, uh, it can sound silly when you talk about, uh, ink, not matching up with other, other, uh, colors of ink and things like that. 
But I mean, if you think about a picture if you or a t-shirt design, if you overlay the blues on top of the yellows wrong or the reds, I mean, everything is going to look like garbage. Mm-hmm. We had that for a lot for at the very beginning, a lot of our stuff, a lot of our product was not uh, performing well. So because of that, and also a part of being a young leader, I felt like I had to be there, not necessarily be in charge, not necessarily have my hand in everything, but just be there. So my soldiers could see, and I say my soldiers, again, I was only there for a month. However, during that time period, I was in charge of that. I was treated as if I was in charge of that unit. Mm-hmm. So during that period, um, I felt it was important to be seen so much so that I was, man, I was slamming monsters, energy, uh, five hours and Red Bulls, like, like they, like they were the last on earth. And, uh, uh, I, I started making mistakes at about our, oh man, it was uh, two and a half days in no sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, all my guys were on rotation. All my ladies were on rotation, but it was, uh, for me, I felt like I had to be there for everybody needed to see me. And so I, uh, I started making mistakes. I started making bad judgment calls. I wasn't taking care of myself. My first sergeant came up to me and she said, uh, sir, I need you to go. I need you to go to that office. I need you to turn off the lights. I need you to, I need you to shut the door. Give me the Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I'm thankful for that lesson. She actually said, uh, sir, you're, you're, uh, you're getting in the way. And I, and like that kind of forward direct communication, I appreciate it. And of course Mm. there's always a time for that, but, uh, uh, and that was definitely one of those times. So I got about five hours of sleep. I woke up refreshed and we carried on the mission, got it done. Uh, uh, the unit got some, got some good recognition out of it. So it was, it ended up being a win once I was able to recognize that I was being more of a detriment to my team than I was a help. Yeah. So, uh, it's always important to be able to to real to have that kind of introspection and realize when when uh, when things are going awry. Yeah. Um, what else can you cite from your time with the military that, in, in terms of that leadership and and along the lines of like some of the stuff that Simon Sinek and and other authors have highlighted that have helped you as you sure. transition, especially like with uh, with consulting. Yeah. So, um, again, early on when I was, and, and, uh, a large amount of, I don't even want to call it a career, my schooling in ROTC, mm-hmm. um, uh, I was a jerk because I thought that that's what I was supposed to be. You know, you see it in the movies all the time. I mean, look at full metal jacket, right? I thought I was, uh, I thought I was him, but, uh, uh, and what that did was it made me unapproachable. Uh, it made people feel alienated. Um, and, and ultimately it hurt my leadership skills. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't a patient individual and, and actually it ended up, and normally I am a patient individual. So it ended up actually affecting me personally. And it, it kind of turned on, turned into this weird alter ego in a way. So, um, but once I recognized that that was happening, Um, And it took, I mean, I'm not saying that was a week long, month long, or even a year long thing. I mean, that took years. Yeah. Um, Once I realized that that was happening, I was able to, uh, to change that thought. So um, I would say being able to be a patient individual, uh, somebody who can empower people uh, to make decisions that are appropriate and maybe may not be the decision that you would make but a decision that worked. Right. Um, and then being able to just communicate. I think that that's, uh, those are, those are some of the big, um, other pillar, other pillars of, of a good leader, a good, uh, a good person that, um, uh, cares about his people. Um, I mean, it's in the title of, of Simon's book, you know, leaders eat last. Mm-hmm. Um, now, granted, I was doing that. He probably got it for me because I was doing that before the book came out. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a hundred percent true. And um, you know, so you always have to make sure that you're taking care of your people. Uh, you're asking them how. And and quite frankly, I would even go a step further and say you're making sure that uh, they're doing okay outside of outside mm-hmm. of their job. Yeah, 100%. you know, really investing yourself in the person, not the employee. I think yeah. that is that is crucial. Yeah, um, I I had a similar experience, but it was in it was in business and running 
especially restaurants uh, for other people going back to, I got my start in like 93, you know, I was yeah. 16, 16, 17 years old and, and That's got put awesome. into a, in a management position. And, and these were older gentlemen who really came from another time in terms of business operation. It was a lot of that same mentality um, that you had to be a jerk. You really just had to be an asshole to get right. the thing that you wanted done. And, um, and I, I picked up a lot of those traits and, and especially once I moved to New York, you know, I, I thought even more so like, now I really get to be an ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was, you, and it was, you, you New Yorkers, man, you New Yorkers are strong willed people. <laughs> we, fucking, we fucking love that, man. Give us just a reason to be an asshole. Um, but, but, and it took some, it took some ego shedding and a lot of time to unpack that. Sure. Just like you, what you were saying, it wasn't, it was something that started for me, like I said, in like the early nineties. And I probably only really started to address it in the last five years, especially right. when I began training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. These, these transitions are going so well. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. This is completely ad lib, folks. This is, like, this I is told good. him yesterday, like, we we're going to talk about these three. <laughs> I didn't know how we were going to get there, but it's just yeah. like getting that, getting that arm bar. You know, you know, you want it. You just don't know how you're going to get there. You just got to maneuver. Right. So, right. yeah, well, at least I think that's right. <laughs> inter, inter Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, where yeah. I've been training for, for the last five years, did mm -hmm. t teaching for about three years as well, which was, mm -hmm. was just a blessing because it just increased my knowledge and skill set. Uh, and that just the depth of the bandwidth went, I was like, wow, this house that's just right. keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. How long have you been training for? I've been training for about two and a half years. And you said yesterday you you've because of work, especially um, what what your your uh, uh, duties as a public servant require. Oftentimes you you don't get to train super That's often. Right. Yeah. That's right. It does. It does run in conflict. Um, mm. It's huge. I mean, you know, as well as I do, there is a, of course, a physical gain. Uh, yep. But there's also a mental and an emotional gain to jujitsu mm -hmm. uh, that honestly, I don't, there are very few places where you can find that kind of environment to, uh, to sharpen yourself. You know, everybody that I've, other than of course, your bad apples that, that are one in a, a million, right. Um, every it's iron sharpens iron day in, day out in the, in the jujitsu mats. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's great, but yeah, I've been doing it about two and a half years. Um, of course with that, I have to take off, uh, four or five months every single year. Um, and so, uh, where, where I get to go maybe five, one time a month or two times a yeah. month. Yeah. So, uh, but that's rough. It's rough. And no amount of YouTube or jujitsu yep. documentary is going to do that. My dogs don't like it when I do it on them. <laughs> right. My wife, my wife has long fingernails that she won't cut. So that's good training though. That's good training. Good. Control those hands. <laughs> control control those hands. hands. <laughs> that's so awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, it was different for me. I trained every day because the school was right amongst all my businesses. So I just always had a bag packed. And every time there was a awesome. free hour, I was just, I was notorious for doing six classes in the day if time allowed. Wow. You know, yeah. That's so I was great. doing like more in a day than you were in a month sometimes. But, but you're a pretty was, old guy, so I mean, that's that's hey, got to hey, be a little, be a little, <laughs> little sore on the muscles, right? No, 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 no. Uh, I I take very good care of myself. Yeah, for for a guy in his mid forties, I recuperate really well. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, you know, I'd been I'd been uh, practicing that with some pretty hard training leading up to my dad uh, is is a hard ass too. He's still he's in his late sixties and still uh, like winning bench press competitions he's good for him he's a uh, he's he's an anomaly we call him guns his nickname that's is fan guns he's just that's like fantastic jack yeah that's so cool the the fact that i mean the fact that your father does that my dad kept running until, and doing push-ups yeah. and sit-ups until uh until he had to have knees complete knee and shoulder replacements yeah you know, well, he's he's up for those. He's just putting it I'm off because sure, he knows sure. he's gonna have to slow down once it happens. But I'll but I'll tell you, man. I mean, there is something to be said for uh, I I hear this all the time, and and you see it, where people in their late twenties, thirties, and forties tend to think that they're no longer because they're no longer a teenager or a uh, uh, twenty five, that for some reason they they have this out 
to stop trying to better themselves. And, and what does that do for you? It does absolutely nothing. 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 And so when you've got a, when you've got a father that, that does bench press, right. Or a father that does anything active, yeah. really. Um, that's, that's excellent. I mean, uh, you, you can hear it from just about anybody. The second that you start uh, doing any kind of physical training is the second that your mental decision-making process goes up, your mentality goes up, you become more positive because you've already faced the fire of the day or the night before. Yep. Um, uh, and your emotional clarity, you know, goes, goes out the, through the roof. Yep. I don't know how many, I mean, during that five month period, you could ask my wife, Right. When I'm only going once or twice a month, well, it's a mess. brother, there are times where she's like, I just need you to go to jujitsu. <laughs> you know, I know that story. Well, go, right. go lift some weights. We're going to take one more quick break and we'll pick back up with that. I want to talk about jujitsu awesome. for the rest of this show. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, everybody. We'll be back in a few. Os. Os. Okay, everybody, we're back. And as promised, we're going to spend the rest of this hour talking about jujitsu. No, not just, but we're going to rope in some of the things that Ryan was just uh, mentioning towards the end of the last segment. The positive effects can't stress it enough. The amount of just goodness that comes from daily physical activity, especially if you're trying to improve and if you own your own business, you're trying to, you know, do better in some company you work for, you want to have a better relationship with your your spouse, partner, children, all of it. It just it raises your emotional intelligence and you you look and feel good. You sleep better. Right. What else did I miss, Ryan? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, that's 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 really good list. I'm sure we could probably add there's on more. to it. There's more. I oh, I'm sure there's definitely more. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I have found really great about the jujitsu community, um, those that last in jujitsu set their ego aside yeah the well that's what it's all about right it's like right. that's what i was saying before is i didn't really realize how much of like a shit salesman i was until <laughs> i was on the mats oh, and i'd been not. i'd been there no i'm just saying like especially this is going back five years and i was a white belt and i remember training with one of the owners it was a, a couple that owns the dojo that i train at and they're both black belts and I was training with with the the lady and and she's excellent she's a little smaller than me though and you know if I really like used my strength she was like this just sucks like neither of us are advancing you're just That's turning right. your head against the wall and it's just it's kind of silly and so we started to talk about how I could mellow out and relax and it began with grits which is That's often right. the first you know and I was like cool so I started to work on that and I would work with her regularly and at one point, I, you know, I had convinced myself I was relaxed. My body was relaxed. My breathing was relaxed, everything. And, and she was like, I need you to relax. And I was like, I feel like I'm relaxed. And she's like, look at your knuckles. And I was just oh. holding her lapels and they were just like <laughs> white. But like my arm was relaxed. My, I, you know, had a calm, you know, demeanor to my face. And it just yeah. really occurred to me then, like how much I tricked myself over right. the years and put on the right. facade, especially for business, you know? And, and it just, I just, I almost went home and cried. I was just like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm such a shitty human. Um, but it was the beginning, it was the beginning of a really great lesson and how to, to peel those layers away. And you're Definitely. right. The, the people, the people that only go to like blue belt, maybe to purple, and then they give up. You, you definitely don't get the depth again of that bandwidth. It just keeps right. It's like a bottomless well, you know, but there's, you're, you're getting water all along the way, but you just like never get to the end. And, uh, the people that right. last are the ones who really, who really, uh, reap the benefit of that. That's right. I mean, I, uh, I will never forget my very first, I'm sure, I don't know. Do you remember your first class? Oh, of course. I do too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and was your, let me ask, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it to you, but let me ask, was your first role with the instructor? My that didn't happen on my first class, but the first okay. time, the first, it's so funny because I, I started right when they opened up, it was their mm -hmm. second school and sure. uh, the other one was kind of far away. So like there was a little crossover of training, but I just stayed yeah. here and I knew nothing about jujitsu prior. He just opened up a couple doors down for me and he was like, you're an athletic guy. You should come train. Right. I think you'll like it. And I was like, this is when I was running five businesses. I had four and I was getting ready to open another one. And I was like, I'm kind of busy. And he's like, 
you'll you'll make time and i was like is this guy crazy and i did i did my first class and i was like oh i'll adjust my schedule i'll make this happen yeah. and you know you go a couple months before you're actually live training where you're just doing the basics and stuff like that that's right and so when they first started there when they first started really the advanced classes and we all got to do because we were all brand new we you know we all started to do live training and if it was an odd number of people he would just hop down and train with you so my, sure. the first times I worked with him, I didn't know. I'm just like, hee, 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 you know, like having oh, yeah. fun. And he was, he was just like cat and mousing and having a good time. And I didn't even think about it. And then that stopped because the classes got big enough where he didn't have to be the extra sure. person and he was monitoring sure. more. And then yeah. it was months before he asked me to train again. And I actually learned a few things. And I remember that first time he asked me, hey, do you want to stay and train a little bit? I was like petrified. I was like, oh, shit like it's, i don't know time. what to do and of course <laughs> yeah. we slapped hands and i went blank and i was just like yeah. uh and and i you know i was contorted in all these different ways and he kind of put it on me a little bit that time and and then it was yeah it was like four and a half years of trying to find where my you know where yeah. my ass was after that <laughs> Well, in constant, like you push it, you keep pushing and pushing against the person. Uh, and like, you want to talk about a metaphor for life, right? Like yeah, the harder you push, I, the it's not going to go. And you he always I mean? says that. He would always say, you know, we can do this all day. You want to keep pushing? I, he's like, I got, I got plenty of energy for this, but it, I know. Would, it would be who you to not push so hard. Yeah. So my very first role was with my black belt instructor. Sean, his name's Sean Woods. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, I had known Sean prior to that. Uh, he actually yeah. used to work at AT and T and sold me my very first cell phone. So when I went to oh, this trip, yeah, so it was kind of wild. Uh, but my first role was with him, and uh, 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 let me think, loop choke, right? No, it wasn't yeah. even a loop choke. He just got a whole, he got cross collar, and he just went like this. And I was, of course, in his guard, like everybody who's ever wrestled or grappled before does. And I just started driving into him and he just went, Matt. And uh, it was it was weeks before Thanksgiving. I will never forget this. It was weeks before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving day was when I could finally swallow right. You were, I was going to say, <laughs> were you drinking turkey out of a straw? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. It was brutal. Yeah. I was so thankful that I was able to eat that day. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, man, it's, it's, such a, it's such a great experience. Um, and then of course, like, you know, there's, there are other aspects of jujitsu that are, that are, uh, great, of course, being able to meet new people. Mm. Um, well, the uh, community, is community is so strong. And I, and Thanks. I asked my professor once because we do Mu Muay Thai as well. And I teach, sure. I was teaching a lot of Muay Thai right up until, uh, until everything was shut down. And, and I noticed that you just didn't get the same commitment from like, you know, the standing arts and, and we do fitness classes as well. Same thing as you do in jujitsu. And I was like, why is that? And he said, man, the, look at the level of commitment you have to have just to do a class with a person. Like it just supersedes all other right. things. And, and it builds these bonds. Uh, you were right. talking earlier about investing in people. It's like you're investing in yourself, but you're investing in your training partners as well. And you develop this little crew and like nobody, you know, first of all, nobody's going to fuck with you because you destroy them. But it's like yeah. emotionally, and spiritually you connect with these people on just like yeah. such a high level and it, like you said earlier such a such a metaphor for life and for business i always yeah. i've always said that it's great we have to um, we have to wrap up here in just a couple of minutes i want you to sure. tell people a little bit more about where they can get in touch with you and oh, definitely. one of some of the things that you offer so go you got about two minutes okay uh well i'm not even going to take the full two minutes man but what i'll what i Come will on. tell you is uh uh, I'm on Twitter at Ryan underscore Clearwater. Um, don't go follow the other Ryan Clearwater. It's not me. Yeah, he's garbage. Uh, he's ga garbage. It's, uh, <laughs> just so everybody knows, it's an inactive account for somebody else. So the guy's probably a nice guy. <laughs> and then I'm on Facebook. Uh, my, my professional page on Facebook is the Ryan Clearwater. Uh, the other Ryan Clearwater, being a Chiefs fan, of course, the other Ryan Clearwater has to be an Oakland Raiders fan which is like one of our big net divisional rivals. Yeah. Uh, but uh, those are my two big ones. Um, if you want to reach out to me, Ryan at RyanClearwater.com. Website's RyanClearwater.com. Uh, there's, a, there's a blog on there that's been, uh, been working on a little bit here and there. Website I'm working on here or there. I'm doing all of this myself. Um, and that's what I'll end on is the fact that um, if anybody out there feels like 
they have a, a, an interest in something, doesn't matter if you've never done it before, learn it. Have a, have a little bit of discipline, a little bit of grace when you're inevitably, inevitably going to fail. But um, at the end of the day, if you're making steps in a positive direction, I don't think you or anybody else can fault you for that. So, uh, you know, so building my website on my own, I was able to earn or learn a lot. Um, of course, do, just doing this podcast here with you, I've never done a podcast before. Oh, on dope. radio shows, awesome. but I've never done a podcast before. So thank you Fantastic. for that. Fantastic. You know, so uh, as long as you're moving forward and breaking down some some personal barriers and learning some stuff, good on you. So that's yeah. that's what all that's the, my final thing I would like to say. Awesome, great stuff, man. So everybody, go do it. Good on you. Do go it. Get it and do some jujitsu. Booyah, <laughs> booyah. All right, everybody. Thank you, Ryan. The rest thank of you, you have a great weekend. Take some of this positive energy. Go get some awesome stuff done. We're going to end with an os. Os. Awesome work, man. Everybody, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to The Entrepreneurial Web.